For example three, it wants us to use a calculator to determine to four decimal places the coordinates of a point on the unit circle that corresponds to a rotation of 148 degrees. Well, if I know that cos of theta is my x and sine of theta is my y, I would get the point of cos of 148 and sine of 148. Remember, this is only true if it is on my unit circle and I have that r value of 1. I can put that into my calculator. Well, cos of 148 is going to give me negative 0 0.8480 and sine of 148 is going to give me 0 0.5299. If the point of T, which is negative 0 0.8829 and 0 0.4695 lies on the unit circle, then it wants to know what the theta is when it is on the positive axis and passing through the point of T. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for what my reference angle is. My reference angle is going to be the positive version of this, which means that I can either take cos to the negative 1 of positive 0 0.8829, or I can take sine to the negative 1 of positive 0 0.4695 and they will both give me a reference angle of 28 degrees. Now if I have a reference angle of 28 degrees I'm looking for when x is negative but y is positive that only occurs in quadrant 2 which means that theta is going to be 180 minus my reference angle of 28 it's going to be 152 degrees. For example, 5. The point of 12 and negative 9 lies on the terminal arm of an angle. Determine sine of the angle, cos of the angle, and tan of the angle. Well, First thing I'm going to do is draw a picture of what this is going to look like. I know that I have an x value of 12 and I have a y value of negative 9. And I can say that here would be my initial arm there's my terminal arm and it creates this right angle triangle right here where I'm going to have a x value of 12 I'm gonna have a y value of negative 9 and I need to solve for what my r value is well if r squared is equal to 12 squared plus 9 squared then r squared is going to equal 225 and r is going to equal 15 when I square root both sides. If this is my angle then I know my opposite, my adjacent, and my hypotenuse. So I can say that sine of the angle is going to equal an opposite of negative 9 divided by hypotenuse of 15 or negative 3 over 5 is a reduced fraction. Cos of the angle is going to equal 12 over 15 or 4 over 5 and tan of the angle is going to equal negative 9 
over 12 or negative 3 over 4. And as we can see, cos is positive, sine is negative, tan is negative, which makes sense given its terminal point. If I'm going to determine the exact values for sine, cosine, and tangent ratios at 120 degrees, then I can use my unit circle for that. I can take a look at my unit circle and say at 120, sine of 120 is equal to root 3 over 2. Cos of 120 is going to be the x value, that's negative 1 over 2. And tan of 120 is going to equal root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 over 2, which is going to give me negative root 3. And once again, I can see that at 120, sine is positive, cos is negative, tan is negative, which makes sense. For example, C. Given that cos of theta is equal to root 33 over 7, where theta is between 0 and 90, determine the exact values of the other two trig ratios. Well, I'm going to draw a little sketch of what this looks like. And I know that if the terminal point is at the first quadrant, and that I have my x value is root 33, and my r value is going to be 7, I just need to solve for my y value. And my y value is going to equal, if I have y squared, it's going to be 7 squared minus root 33 squared. Or y squared is going to equal 16, which means that y is going to equal 4. And now I can solve for the other two ratios. Because it's in quadrant 1, they're both going to be positive. And I can say that sine of theta is going to equal the opposite, 4 divided by the adjacent, or sorry, divided by the hypotenuse, 7. And this can't be reduced. And tan of theta is going to equal the opposite of 4 divided by the adjacent of root 33, which when I rationalize it is going to be 4 root 33 over 33. For the last example, suppose that the angle theta is an angle in standard position and sine of theta is equal to negative 6 over 13 and cos of theta is less than 0 which means that I have a negative cos as well. Well if I have a negative sine and a negative cos This can only exist in quadrant 3. So it's going to exist it's going to exist down here. I know I have an opposite where it's negative 6 and I know that I am going to have a radius of 13. To solve for my x value x squared is going to equal 13 squared minus 6 squared, which means that x squared is going to equal 133, or x is going to equal the square root of 133, which can't be simplified. If it wants the value of tan, I know that x is actually a negative one because it's going to work backwards, which means that tan of theta is going to equal negative 6 divided by 
negative root 133 or 6 root 133 over 133.